डॉक्टर हरीश असनानी एम बी बी एस डी ओ एम एस एम एस फेलो विट्रियो रेटिनल सर्जरी इज अ विट्रियो रेटिनल सर्जन एट एडवांस आई हॉस्पिटल एंड इंस्टीट्यूट ही हैज मोर देन टू डेकेज ऑफ एक्सपीरियंस इन द फील्ड ऑफ विट्रियो रेटिनल सर्जरी एंड इज अकम्पलिश इन ट्रीटिंग द न्यूमरस डिजीज अफेक्टिंग द विट्रियस मैक्यूला एंड रेटिना Today Dr Harish Asnani will talk about diabetic retinopathy how it can be treated and what are the symptoms you should look out for The retina is actually like a camera it's a living camera let me show you how it is just like a camera if you see this camera it has a lens in front and the this is a digital camera but you have film at the back which takes the pictures and the eye is just like a camera and if you see this model of the eye the lenses and the cornea which is in front the light enters into the eye and then it's focused on the retina so the retina is the layer which acts like the film in the camera right here and this works exactly like how our, our ccds or the films work in a camera so in short it's a transparent layer right at the back of the eye light enters the through the front of the eye through the cornea from here or here and then it is focused by the lens on to the retina this retina contains cells which are known as photoreceptors and these are light sensitive cells these receive the light they trans transmit this information through the nerves which is the optic nerve right into the brain then the brain interprets this as a picture an image or a photograph whatever we are seeing see the common problems that we see in the retina are in not of any particular order but the most common ones we see are diabetic retinopathy then we see age related macular degeneration then retinal vein occlusion common in patients with blood pressure retinal detachments retinal holes and tears a lot of injuries to the eye which involve the retina and common problems in children which are associated with some inborn disorders genetic disorders and something that we are seeing a lot right now is retinopathy of prematurity so diabetic retinopathy is one of the most common retinal disorders that we treat nowadays as you know india is the capital of diabetes of the world and the largest number of diabetics would be present in india and china alone and maybe we'll overtake china in the next 15 to 20 years as the diabetic uh, capital and obviously we are going to see more and more complications of diabetes like retinopathy nephropathy neuropathy etc the numbers are so mind boggling that everybody needs to be aware of diabetic retinopathy diabetic retinopathy is basically a disorder which uh, because of uh, a lack of blood supply to the retina which occurs in other parts of the body like the kidney and the brain the retina also receives a little less blood supply this is a condition called hypoxia and because of hypoxia the retina being an organ which demands so much oxygen just like the brain from the blood uh starts suffering and the earliest changes what we see in diabetic retinopathy are because of hypoxia there is uh, swelling in the retina there are blood clots on the retina these are the early stages known as non proliferative or background diabetic retinopathy then the further advanced stages moderate or advanced diabetic retinopathy where these blood clots increase there is more swelling and then the patient's vision gets affected here we have an entity called as diabetic maculopathy where the central retina that is in this model i can show you this is the center of the retina here where the rays of light are focused and maculopathy involves the center of the retina and at the earliest stage of maculopathy the patient's vision can get affected so if untreated early diabetic retinopathy and maculopathy pro can progress into a proliferative diabetic retinopathy stage now that's a sight threatening condition where there is bleeding from the retina known as vitreous hemorrhage or preretinal hemorrhage then blood vessels which grow from the surface of the retina they invade the front part of the eye and that can be a very dangerous and very fast progressing condition and that requires surgical intervention in most of these cases the end stage of diabetic retinopathy if it is not treated even then uh, is known as neovascular glaucoma where there is a bleeding uh, blood uh, a growth of blood vessels into the front part of the eye and because of this the intraocular pressure the eye pressure goes up and that can result in a painful blind eye and that's the end stage of diabetic retinopathy 
in the early stages of diabetic retinopathy there are patient has no symptoms vision is normal nothing is affected uh, only we can see a few blood clots or few exudates on the retinal surface but as diabetic retinopathy advances or diabetic maculopathy starts developing patient's vision can go down when there is bleeding in front of the retina or from the retina then patients experience floaters a shower of black cloud or a black spots in front of the eye and that's something which uh, they the patients start coming running to us uh, with for treatment and uh, when the proliferative stage starts the proliferative vessels which growing on the retina they pull the retina and uh, you can get retinal tears sudden loss of vision because of that diabetic uh, yeah, the end stage diabetic retinopathy of course which results in a rise in intraocular pressure can be very painful which of course patient will not be able to bear at all See, by intraocular pressure, I mean there is a certain amount of pressure in the eye which maintains the globe, the eyeball in its proper shape and this also has a role in circulation in the eye. So just like we have normal blood pressure which keeps the blood pumping and the heart pumps blood at a certain pressure and sends it to the end organs at a certain pressure. We have an intraocular pressure. The normal intraocular pressure is something around 17, 18, up to 20 millimeters of mercury. If it goes above that, it starts pressing on the optic nerve and other important organs in the retina, the, op the retinal uh, nerve fiber layer, and it can cause gradual loss of vision. Diagnosis of uh, diabetic retinopathy has to be done at the earliest stage possible. So the most important thing is screening of diabetic patients. As soon as we come to know that somebody has diabetes, should have a baseline retina checkup. Diabetic retinopathy can occur in some bad diabetics even in a couple of years or three years time. But there are patients even after 10 years of diabetes not getting any retinopathy, they are very lucky. So screening of diabetic retinopathy is very important. And the moment we see some changes of diabetic retinopathy like black, uh, the, the hemorrhages on the retina or some exudate or swelling on the central retina, then we do some tests. One test is called as OCT, Optical Coherence Tomography, where we see the thickness of the retina in the center. If the thickness is increased beyond a certain limit, then we need to take some action. Then there is another test called angiography, fluorescein angiography, where we see the circulation of the retina. Just like you have a coronary angiography which is very familiar to everybody, that's where we see the blood supply of the heart, heart muscles. Here we see the blood supply of the retina. So we inject a dye, it's a fluorescent dye which is injected intravenously and then photographs are taken of the retina. By then, by those, with those photographs, we can see how good the retinal circulation is. And sometimes we, there are some, some, some surprises because of this test in a no seemingly normal looking retina, we are able to actually see some parts where there is absolutely no blood supply to the retina or small leaking blood vessels and we can pick up these cases very early. The treatment of diabetic retinopathy, which is the other part, in early stages we don't do anything. But moment we see there is ischemia of the retina, by ischemia we mean lack of blood supply. When we see ischemia of the retina, we try to treat that with laser. Doing laser treatment improves the blood supply to the rest of the retina. So this has a preventive role. Then if there are blood vessels growing on the surface of the retina, these can be destroyed with laser. This is called as laser photocoagulation. Now if the disease be progresses beyond that stage, then we need to do surgery. Surgical treatment for diabetic retinopathy is in the form of a surgery called vitrectomy. This is the basic surgery. Vitrectomy means removing the vitreous. The vitreous is the gel which is in the center of the eye here. And when the blood leaks from the retina, it occupies the center of the eye here and the patient cannot see. So this blood is removed from the center of the eye. Vitrectomy surgery involves making openings into the eye from the sides here. And these openings enable us to go into the eye, remove the blood. After we remove these blood clots, then we see the retina under the microscope. And if there are growing blood vessels on the surface of the retina, we remove those blood vessels with scissors, vitreous scissors. And after those are removed, then the retina is treated with laser. And then we inject a kind of a gas 
or silicon oil into the vitreous as a substitute for the vitreous and put the retina back into its normal place. Sometimes we can combine surgery with the injections also. In very bad cases where there is uh, the retina is very angry looking, bleeding a lot, we first inject these drugs called bevacizumab or ranibizumab and then after four or five days take up the patient for surgery. It makes surgery a little easier. Found our information useful? If you find the video helped you, please like it. Tell us what you think about our videos. Please leave a comment. To watch our other videos, click here.